How's it going everybody? Ad Ricker here, and this is the Uditer S3 electric longboard. Pretty impressive for the price, 500 US dollars, and so far me and my friends have been having a grand old time riding around with this, putting on some miles. In this video, I'll be riding it around, telling you about some of the specs, and kind of what I think about it. First off, this is their Lava Monster design, so it's got a unique grip tape, as well as the paint job underneath. This is the 105 millimeter wheel version, so these are bigger wheels than normal. In fact, bigger wheels than a normal longboard, let alone a regular skateboard. The S3 features a swappable battery system. So there's a battery in there right there, right here, and then they give you an extra one. Each battery is rated for 20 to 25 miles of range, but that's with a 150 pound person. Uh, I'm more like 230 pounds, so I doubt I'm gonna see that type of range. But this is the cool thing, you can keep an extra battery in your backpack or at home and swap them out. It takes about four hours to recharge one of these batteries, so it's nice to just swap it out and go. The wider eight inch truck is going to help with minimizing speed wobbles and maximizing stability. And that's what I want. I wanna have the big wheels that not only get over the small potholes and maybe don't make me get thrown over the front because of just small pebbles, but also the wider wider trucks with the stability at higher speeds. I do wear a helmet when I ride this because, um, yeah, let's just say I like my head the way it is. It feels good. It feels stable. And um, going over some challenging little spots there. It's going well. Now I had tried an electric board back in 2017 with Chris Rollins, so I kind of already knew what to expect with the acceleration and the brake, which is something that if you're not used to feeling, can be a little bit jarring. However, if you're new to longboarding in general or skateboarding and you're not comfortable getting on a board at all, you can buy their optional handlebar attachment. It attaches right to the nose of this thing and turns it almost into like a scooter. And then once you get familiar with it, you can then take that handlebar off and ride it for real. The remote control is pretty simple. You've got your power button as well as your speed selection. And then most obviously, you have this thumb control. Using your thumb, you can press it up or down and then you'll go faster or brake. So there is a brake. To power on the remote, long press the power button. To power on the board, you can either press the power button on the board or briefly kick out the board like this and that'll start the board too. So you have anywhere from speed one to speed four. Speed one is your slowest and then speed three is pretty much like almost top speed but not quite enough oomph to get up like a, a big hill. Speed four has not only the speed, but also the acceleration and the power, max power, so that you can get up a pretty decent hill um, without really slowing down at all. Also, there's a battery readout on the remote control, not only for the board, but also for the remote control itself. I actually really like this remote a lot better than the boosted board remote that I tried with Chris Rollins. I remember not having a good experience with my thumb. It kind of felt like my thumb was slipping off the accelerator. This feels so much better. It also has a readout and it gives you your miles per hour. So you see in this footage on occasion, as I'm kind of riding around, I'm looking at my speedometer to see how fast I'm going. The motors are powerful. There's two 600 watt motors powered by the Lin Yi 2.0 Smart ESCs. And together that allows for this to go 28 miles per hour top speed. You really have to respect these boards and how fast they're going. And because they're powered, it's kind of easy for it to get away from you. The fact there's also a brake means that you're probably looking at steeper hills or more challenging environments that you wouldn't have been able to ride on if you didn't have a powered skateboard or longboard. Another thing you really have to keep in mind with electric skateboards is that the accelerator will boost you forward, so you kind of have to lean forward. But then if you take your thumb off the accelerator too quick, then you might actually lurch forward as it kind of stops pushing you. You not only have to keep your balance left to right as you turn and as you lean and as you carve, but also front to back. The deck is made of bamboo and fiberglass, and it's got quite a bit of a flex to it. By the way, carrying it around, this is a heavy board. It's about 20 pounds. And so that's heavier than some other electric skateboards I've seen, and definitely heavier than my regular unpowered longboard. So if you do run out of power and you don't have your extra battery to swap in, it, it's a big deal. It's a lot to carry. Now the wheels do have a little bit of a softness to them when you press them with your fingers. That in addition with the super flexibility of the fiberglass and bamboo deck means this is a pretty smooth ride. The wheels are really soft. I love it. I love how soft the wheels are. 
when I'm on the pavement of the sidewalk and I hear like kachook, 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 kachook. It feels really deadened. It almost feels like there's a fine layer of carpet over everything. As with all boards, the trucks are able to be tightened or loosened depending on how heavy you are and your riding style. You, the tighter the truck, probably the, the bigger the person. Also, the tighter the truck, the faster you might be going. So if you're going slower and you want to be more nimble, you'd want a looser truck. If you're a heavier person or you're trying to go faster, you'd want a tighter truck for stability. Now, we've been getting pretty creative with the longboard. We've been doing a couple different uh, ways of riding this, uh, especially my friend Marty. <laughs> oh, you're stuck in there. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> <laughs> the battery swap process is pretty simple as well. The battery here is held on by two tabs. And so it's very easy to just take your hand and pop it out. And then from there, you've got your plug. You can charge the battery from the plug on the battery or from the plug on the ESC box over here. Um, I usually do it from the plug on the ESC box if I'm not planning to swap the battery, especially if the other one's already full. It's like, well, let's just charge them both, get them both charged. And then when you put it back uh, into the slot, there's a specific way to do this. First of all, you have to get this plug nicely into the groove of the battery. And then with one of your hands, go ahead and press one side in with the clip and then use some force to press the other side in and then kind of manhandle that other clip right in. You can hear there's that click. That's what you want to hear, and then it's nice and secure. However, I have secured this battery before, and one time, only once, it's fallen out on me while I was riding, and that was a little nerve wracking. It was not going to trip me up because it was still held on by the power cable, but it surprised me and I jumped off because I was concerned about what might happen to the battery dragging underneath. Another thing I noticed is that there's a bit of a rattling in the ESC box after a few miles of riding around some rough pavement. Something's loose inside the ESC box. All right, so I just got done riding this board again. Um, so basically what happened was after I recorded that part of the review saying that uh, the battery only ejected once, the battery ended up wiggling free again, and that was very disappointing. So before I completed the video, I ended up emailing Uditter and I asked why that might happen and what's the fix for it. Spike at Uditter was very shocked that it was happening. It's happened twice to me. He said that there's a way for you to tighten up the battery base. You have to take off the grip tape, which is a bit, a bit, a bit of a pain, and then tighten the eight screws that secure the battery base to the deck. You don't tighten them all the way or the battery will not snap in, but if you tighten them part of the way, then it becomes more difficult to snap in and probably also more tightly fit. While I was doing that, I also peeled off the other side of the grip tape and I fixed the ESC rattling around. Sure enough, the ESC had popped out, the glue had come free, so I put in some epoxy and then also fit some foam in there to secure the ESC very tightly inside the ESC housing. The only bad thing is heating up and then peeling off the grip tape kind of discolors it. So you can see my board has these weird streaks where I pulled the grip tape away and then replaced it. It is unfortunate that happened, but I feel like I fixed the board. Now, it's a shame that I had to fix anything. Um, two different points of failure and I don't know if it's because it's a very humid area of North Carolina, it's hot, you know, so I mean, I don't know if the deck warps and then that made the battery fit differently than it normally does in the warehouse. I just wanted to warn you, if you go for this board, there might be some things you have to address over time. Now, also I took it in some challenging spots. So like this asphalt is okay, but further on it is trash. It's really, really low quality asphalt that they should really be tearing up. But I thought it was a good spot to, uh, to test this. Uh, so basically, I did the same run that caused the battery to eject yesterday, and today it did not eject. Uh, I did it twice to make sure. So I think I fixed it. I guess you got to keep that in mind. I feel confident about the board now, but I did not feel confident about it before. So I'm going to flip back to the other part of the review where I wrap things up. I'll see you there. It's easy to review a product and say, oh, I love it, because you've only put 10 miles on it. You know, and after 100 miles, that's when things start to really show up. So thank you so much for watching. Thank you to Oditor for sending this to me. Um, you know, I, I usually make drone stuff on my channel, but every once in a while something pops up that I also really enjoy talking about and using for the first time. So check out a link to this board in the video description below. And if you have any questions, comment below. And until next time, happy riding.